Hi, it's Corrine, and today I am so excited to share the Misty with you. This is the most incredible stamp tool invented, and Ileana from My Sweet Petunia was kind enough to send this to me to review it and very generously offered another one for me to be able to give one lucky subscriber of mine a chance to win. So check out the description box for more information. Head over to my blog and enter a comment on this post to win a chance to win this amazing tool. I received this uh, probably about two weeks ago and I have been playing with it and I am in love. If you are a card maker, a stamper in any way, a scrapbooker, you will love this tool. So again, this stands for the most incredible stamp tool invented and Ileana invented it. She is a card maker herself. So she knew exactly what she was doing when she made this amazing tool. It comes in both the original size, which is the one I have here. It also, they also have the mini Mister Misty and there are some instructions on the back, but this is a very easy to use tool. So again, this is the original size and it is eight and a half by six and a half. It has both a horizontal and vertical grid. And as you can see, there is a laser etched grid version here. So you can, it helps you to line up your stamps very easily. It has acrylic hinges, so it opens and closes very nicely. And it comes with two very, very strong magnets. She also sells more of them if you're interested. And it also comes with a grid paper mat, which she does sell more of those as well. Those are great to help, again, line up your stamps or just to keep your work area clean. It gives you just enough padding so when you're pressing down, it gives you a little give. This mat also comes on the inside and this you wanna remove if you're using cling rubber stamps. It adds enough height with clear stamps that you get a perfect image, but you remove that when you're using cling stamps. So for now, I'm placing that back in, I'm adding my magnets, and I wanna share with you a few things that this wonderful tool can do. So I'm going to first just do a basic stamp. I'm, I'm using a W9, that is all stamp, and I'm going to just stamp out a regular sentiment. I'm you can use your grid marks to line it up if you want to do that. I'm just going to place it down and eyeball it. And I'm going to choose a larger stamp and a smaller stamp. I'm choosing the word perfect. And you are. So the first thing I'm doing is lining up my piece of paper right in that left hand bottom corner and as long as I always line it up in that corner I will always be able to line up my stamps perfectly if I need to stamp them more than once. So I'm using my magnets to hold my cardstock in place. I'm going to line this up. Again you can use your grid if you want to do that. I'm just going to eyeball it. Place it exactly where I want. Once I'm happy with the placement of that, I'm going to close my lid. Now, if I was working on my actual card, I could also place a temporary piece of card over it and stamp it down to see if I was happy with the placement of it. I've never stamped these before, and when you get a brand new stamp set, you want to condition them by stamping them off a few times, but with the Misty, you don't have to worry about that. So I can go ahead and just press down on my acrylic lid, lift it up, because they're brand new stamps, they're very sticky, so it's going to move my cardstock. No big deal. I'm just going to place it right back in that corner, put my magnets on it to hold it in place, and now it's going to be exactly where I want it. So I'm going to ink these up. Again, these are brand new stamps. You normally want to condition them by stamping them off a few times because you will not get a good Im stamped image the first time. Here I inked it up, but I purposely did a bad job to show you. So just give it some light pressure, pick it back up, and look how bad that first impression was. First of all, I didn't ink it perfectly. And second of all, like I said, it's a brand new stamp, so it's not gonna most likely stamp perfect the first time. But with the Misty, you don't have to worry about that. Just place it right back in your corner and re-ink it, re-stamp it. You can stamp it as many times as you need to to get a perfect impression. 
So I'm inking it up very well this time. I'm going to give it some light pressure. And I'm still not happy with that. If you look closely in the R and the T, there's still a couple of white spots. That's most likely because it's the first time I'm using this stamp. So no big deal. I'm going to place it right back in my corner, ink it a third time. And this time I'm going to get a perfect impression. With the Misty, you can make hundreds of cards if you wanted to, and they will all turn out perfectly. If you do all your sentiments at one time, then go back and do all your images at one time, you're going to get the exact same look on every single card. And look how perfect that image is this time. That's amazing. So then you want to go ahead and clean off your stamp. You want to be careful with what you're using to clean because you are working on a laser etch version of the Misty, uh, the grid mat is laser etched. So in the store at My Sweet Petunia, they do sell some cleaning supplies for that, which I do plan on picking up. But you want to, if you're going to use a baby wipe like I did there, you want to make sure to go ahead and use a baby wipe with no alcohol in it. So here I'm speeding up the process a little. I'm showing you an Avriel stamp that I have, and it's a very solid flag stamp. And I love this stamp set. However, I never used this stamp in it because I never could get a good impression. So every time I would pull it out and go to use it, I always got a bad impression from it. So I, I shied away from using it. Now with the Misty, I can use it, and I'm going to get a perfect impression with it. I'm inking it up with Simon Says Stamp, or excuse me, Hero Arts pale tomato and look how bad that is that's how it would it would turn out for me there therefore I never use this stamp set now I can just place my cardstock right back in that corner re-ink it give it some firm pressure and I'm going to do it one more time and look how perfect this stamp set is so because of this misty it allows me to use stamps that I have been shying away from using and look how it retained that white border when I've tried in the past to line it back up I've screwed up lining it up perfectly and it would never retain that white border. Here's another thing that you can do with the Misty. I'm using a W plus nine die cut. It says the word amazing. And if you want to stamp directly on your die cut, it's very hard to do without the Misty if you're trying to line it up yourself. But all I'm doing is placing down the negative back in my work spot, putting that die cut directly back into the negative space, lining my stamp directly over it, picking it up with my acrylic lid. And now I'm going to ink it up with the same pale tomato, press it down, and I'm going to get a perfect stamp directly on that small die cut. That's almost impossible to do if you're trying to line it up yourself. So another great thing that you can do with the Misty is use layering dies. I'm using a just right layering die called Wild Roses. And I'm placing down my largest first layer of flowers and a stamp. I'm going to be using some Hero Arts bubblegum ink for the first layer, inking that up very well. I'm going to use olive, soft olive for my leaf, pressing that down and I'm not happy with that. So I simply am placing it right back in my corner, inking it up again. Again, do this as many times as you need to to get the look that you're going for. So here I do it three times. On the third time, I'm extremely happy with it. Press that down. And I'm very happy with the flowers. I'm not happy with the leaf. So I'm simply cleaning off my flowers, removing those from my acrylic lid, and then I will re-ink my leaf and stamp it again. If I was working directly on a project, I may have ruined the project because of this. But because of the stamping, I'm, excuse me, because of the Misty, I'm able to stamp it again and get a perfect impression. I think my magnet was a little too close to the leaf and that's why I wasn't getting a good impression. As soon as I moved that and re-stamped it, I was able to line it up perfectly and get a good impression. So I'm lining up my second layers. Those are easy to do. You just want to line up the center and go ahead and add your second color, your darker color on there. I'm going to align it right back in that corner. I'm using ultra pink for this next color. 
pressing that down and look what a gorgeous impression that I got from that. And now I'll do the exact same thing with the leaf. I'm going to use field greens, easily align it up, stamp that down. And that's a perfect impression. I'm doing it twice to get it the darkness that I want from it. So here is the center of the flowers. Again, those are so easy to line up with the Misty and you can add as many layers as you need to. I made a card using those exact same colors and with my Misty, I did a lot of work to those. I added that die cut, amazing die cut. I added a lot of stamping in the background and a lot of layers here so you can see. So this card, it did not take me long because of the Misty, but I did a lot of work to it adding all my layers. And the best part about the entire thing was I was able to add my sentiment at the very end. Had I put all that work into the flowers and screwed up my sentiment, I would have had to start all over. But because of the Misty, I was able to finish it off with my sentiment, add a black layer of cardstock, a pink layer of cardstock. I added a little bit of dimension under it and placed it on a standard A2 sized card. I was really happy with how that turned out. The next thing I'd like to share with you is a large background stamp. I'm using a just right upcycle wood grain background. I'm taking out my foam piece because this is a cling mounted stamp. And this is another stamp that I tend, tend not to use very often because I never got a good impression from it. It's a wood grain, so you don't need the best impression from it. So I, I have kept the stamp, but I always shied away from using it. So here I'm using some London Fog Memento ink, stamping it down and showing you right there that I missed an entire portion. So no big deal, I'm going to re-ink it. And this time I'm only inking about three quarters of my stamp and pressing it down because I wanna show you, you can get a gradient look with the Misty because you can stamp it as many times as you want. So this last time I stamped just the bottom and hopefully you'll be able to see on camera, it lightly gets a little bit lighter at the top and gets a little bit darker. So that would be great with a script stamp to use, any type of large stamp. So now that's plastic on the bottom so you can just simply wipe that off, clean off your stamp. And now I'm going to replace my foam piece in the back along with my grid mat and my magnets. And I wanna share another technique with you that I'm really excited about. This is clear acetate paper. I got this from Michaels and it's by We Are Memory Keepers. And I love it, it's got the polka dots in it. This I like to use in different type of journal books or make pockets out of or smash books. And I wanna show you that with the Misty you can make your own. I'm using a piece of Heartfelt Creations clear cardstock, and I'm going to place this in the Misty. However, I'm not placing it in the corner. I'm going to use my grid mat, line it up more towards the center of the Misty. And a way that I can do that to keep it in place, I'm gonna place my magnets down and use a pencil to mark exactly where I have it. So when I need, when it moves and I need to replace it, I have pencil lines to show right where I had it in the first place. So now I'm going to use some stays on opaque. I'm pulling out a heart stamp and I'm going to ink that up. And there were a couple of times that I had to ink it up twice. I didn't do a good job inking it up. So I inked it up twice and re-stamped it. Otherwise, I'm just moving it around and making my own background paper. You can do this with transparency or clear cardstock. And if you do it without the Misty, it, it tends to slide around, but the, with the Misty, it holds it right in place and makes it very easy to make your own background paper. So I'm cleaning that off and showing you up close. Look how cute that paper is. And it was so easy with the Misty. Here's some black cardstock so you can see it a little bit better. So again, I made my own cardstock. I'm going to add it into my binder, which I'll show you here what it looks like. And that just gives it so much more character. You can make any type of background stamps. Here's another one that I made with the Misty. I made my own plaid background. I used a Winnie and Walter scenery stripes, and that's a very solid stripe, 
So you don't get a good impression the first time. But with the Misty, I was able to stamp each one of those three different times. And the best part is I could stamp more than one at a time. So it really cut down on the time that it took me to make my own plaid background. And then when I was done, I stamped my sentiment thank you on the front. And I didn't have to worry about ruining my background. So here in a nutshell is the Misty. It truly is the most incredible stamp tool invented. Ileana asked me for a very honest review and honestly, it's one of the best tools for stamping out there. Check out My Sweet Petunia and also stop by my blog, enter the contest to win a Misty. And thank you Ileana for allowing me the chance to review this amazing tool. Thanks for watching.